Hey guys, today I wanted to share with you some of my Halloween DIY crafts. Obviously some of these could be used in other times, but I love Halloween. I keep Halloween stuff out all year round. Um, so I wanted to go above and beyond and do some fun Halloween crafts for my pets. Um, I will leave timestamps in the description on where each craft is, um, but I hope you enjoy. Uh, without further ado, here are the crafts. So first make sure all of the paint you're using is non-toxic. This is just some paint I got at Target that I made sure was non-toxic. Um, I'm starting out by painting this little pumpkin container. I think it might be like a lantern or something. I'm painting it white. I didn't want to go with orange. I thought that was too cliche. Um, this specific one does have little plastic pieces in the windows. So make sure to avoid those if you get this exact same one. But I decided to just paint the whole thing white. Uh, once I let that dry, I went in and freehanded some black stripes on. Um, I was going to tape it off, but I decided that the freehanded look might look a little better with everything else I was doing. Not quite so polished, a little more DIY. And that's kind of what all of the other projects that I'm doing are going for as well. Um, I'm hoping that the hamster doesn't try chewing on any of these things. However, if she does, all of the paint is non-toxic. It's the same stuff you would give to children, so it should be fine. If for some reason she's chewing incessantly, I will just take it away. Um, but yeah, I just went through and painted the black and white stripes on both sides of it. I ended up leaving the two side pieces, just the natural wood. Not for any reason in particular, other than I just uh, didn't feel like painting it, I guess. And at this point, I just went in to do some last finishing touches, making sure the edges were at least smooth, not necessarily straight, because like I said, I wanted it to be like DIY looking. Um, next, I'm going in with this little ceramic ghost hide. Honestly, I was hoping to find something a little more exciting than a ghost. Um, Ghosts are kind of hard to be super creative with. However, I do think I did a good job. So I started painting the eyes black. I just filled in both the eyes completely solid black. Um, and then I moved on to the bottom. I decided to do kind of a dry brush technique, but with a solid base. So I painted upwards from the bottom there was a little lip so i wanted to get that little lip completely black and then i just brushed all the way up um to give kind of a dry brush look i also thought maybe it looked like it was adding texture or that it was like inky i don't know i thought it ended up looking pretty good and it also ended up looking good with the other um, things I did and this will be a great hide for the hamster if I knew how I probably would have took the bottom off um, But I don't know how and I have other ceramic dishes like this that my hamsters do just fine in without getting All gunked up and gross. So it should be fine But yeah, I basically just went in dry brush got some white and black all over it And I thought this ended up looking pretty cute. Like I said, it's hard to kind of do something with a ghost but I thought this looked pretty good and pretty easy. Next, I went in with this little pumpkin guy. Um, I plan on using this as kind of like a divider. Um, so I went in and painted all the little crevices solid black. Um, and then I went and painted all of the like depth edges black. Um, so basically anything that's not flat surface, I went in and painted black. Next, I went in with some orange paint and started painting all of the flat surface on the top orange. Um, I clearly didn't wait long enough for this to dry all the way because I was getting some black smudgy bits, which I wasn't really going for. Honestly, I didn't think it looked that bad. It's just not what I was going for. Um, so I did end up going back in and putting another coat of orange on in the morning to completely cover that, um, which you will see in a little bit. But basically, I'm just going to cover the entire front with orange. And then I decided to cover the outside edge and the back with black, like 100%. And I didn't record that at all. Um, but I did end up doing that. I thought it looked pretty nice. It made the orange stand out, which I was, which what I was really going for. Um, I don't really know what the hamster is going to use this for. Like I said, I'm hoping I can 
just do this like as a divider or something between a thicker and thinner layer of bedding um, but I thought it was super cute and it's something that's totally safe to put in the enclosure that was incredibly cheap and easy to make which is the whole point of this video and then this is where I began going over with a second coat in the morning just covered up and it actually did a really good job I didn't need more than two coats um, on it at least like dried coats I did I think go over a couple spots a little more but uh, it ended up being completely solid orange, which is exactly what I I wanted. And then this was the final look. Like I said, I covered the other parts in black. And now moving on to the next project. I am making a pumpkin hide. So I got one of the carvable pumpkins from Michaels. This is made out of a very weird material that I'm not sure will be good. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye out and see if my hamster chews on it. She doesn't really chew on stuff that isn't like designed to chew on, like my mice would totally destroy this, but my hamster doesn't, so I'm hoping this will be fine. I'm just gonna have to keep a close eye on it. Um, and if you, you give this to one of your hamsters, make sure you get keep a close eye on the pumpkin as well, just to make sure. But basically right now I'm sketching out a classic jack-o'-lantern um, design. I thought this would be cool because it would literally be like a full-size jack-o'-lantern in her enclosure. And if for some reason she does start chewing on it, I can always pull it out and use it as a jack-o'-lantern on my front porch and put a little light in it or something. Um, but for this, I decided to just draw out the design and then use a kitchen knife. Um, make sure you're very careful when you're doing this because it is really hard to cut through this stuff if you don't have a super sharp knife. Like even my normal kitchen knives I was having a hard time with, which is why I had to stick it between my legs here. Um, so just make sure you're super careful. But once you get it popped out, uh, it's a little bit easier, but just be warned. Now that I got all of the things popped out, I decided to paint this white material uh, black just to kind of hide it a little more and also be more uniform with the other things I was making um anything else I was jack-o'-lantern had like black eyes so I thought I would do that I made sure to make the holes big enough that if for some weird reason my hamster wanted to try squeezing through that it would be totally fine um this was super hard to stay in the line so as you'll see in a little bit I actually ended up outlining the outside with black um, but now I'm cutting a hole in the back, so I ended up making it bigger than this, but that gives kind of an idea of how big I wanted it. I did it directly the opposite side of the jack-o'-lantern, um, and I just cut the hole out, and then I also painted that rim with black, um, and you'll see here a little bit better. It was super hard to paint the jack-o'-lantern, so I ha ended up having to do that off camera. Um, but this hole you'll see, I painted the rim black, and then I ended up going around the edge a little bit with black and I think it made the final product look a little bit better. I was going for a little more of a grungy vibe um, so that's how I ended up doing it. Not super prim and proper like pumpkin. And then here you see that I'm going over the edge just a teeny tiny bit to kind of cover any imperfections, make a little look a little more clean. And then what I did is wipe off my brush and do some more dry brushing technique like I did on that ghost on the outside of the pumpkin. Um, for some reason, I don't have any of the footage, but here you can see the final look. I did it mainly from the top down just to make it look a little more grungy and a little more weathered, spooky-like. And for this last project, I decided to use air dry clay instead of any sort of um, baking clay or kiln clay. Um, one, because I don't have a kiln, and two, because I just wanted to, I don't know, do it in the, the most accessible way for everyone. So I started forming the clay. I broke it up into four pieces and ended up making five dishes, like three larger ones and two small ones. Um, my cousin does have a fairly successful pottery business um, and I used to work with her and help her make stuff to sell um, when she lived closer. So I did learn quite a few things. At first I started um, a pinch bowl technique and I decided that wasn't really gonna work for what I was going for because I'm trying to make something big enough for my cat or ferret to eat out of. So I ended up scrapping this idea and uh deciding to go with more of i actually don't even know what it's called but it's when you make the base and then you make the 
the edge part and it looks like more a traditional pet bowl um like i said i don't know what exactly what the things are called um but she did teach me some stuff and she clearly knows what she's talking about um so i made the base a little bit bigger than i wanted it to be because i did end up um folding it in just to make sure if i put water in it that it's not going to leak i also did end up putting mod podge over the entire outside but i needed to make sure i could get this video up before it was done drying so i didn't record that but if you need it to be waterproof make sure you put mod podge on it um anyways back to this so then i started making the outside rim i just basically i know it's kind of hard to see here but made a strip about how tall I wanted it to be and started flattening it down to be the thickness I wanted. I did have to tear off and re-put the amount of clay I needed in different spots, um, but ultimately this was the right amount. I just had to get it into the shape I needed to be able to wrap around the entire base of the bowl. Um, please don't take this as a tutorial. I'm just trying to show you some fun techniques. If you need to see something specific about, uh, what I'm doing here, um, I will see if I can find a video on the technique I'm doing. Um, but yeah, if not, just wing it. I kind of did that too. It's been a while since I helped my cousin, so just kind of wing it. Um, honestly, these did not come out looking professional at all. But they did turn out super cute and they are functional, which is the most important part. So that's all that mattered. Okay, now we get into me actually sizing to make sure it fits right. So like I said, I made the bottom part a little bit bigger than I needed to because I planned on wrapping the underneath of the edge to seal it to the bottom base part. So I know that's super confusing. Like I said, this is not a tutorial, but it makes it work and makes it sturdier and more airtight so that's what i did um i just kind of pinched around until i got it done and just so you know i only show you doing this one time and then i did the rest off camera because holy moly no one needs to see this done multiple times um just basically make it whatever size you want and also watch a real tutorial so yeah but this is what i did i pinched around sealed the edges and then i went through and kind of smoothed the top by rolling it back a little bit um just so it wasn't so lumpy and pinchy and a little less uh handmade so it a little more professional um but i think it ended up turning out pretty cute then i had to sit and let it dry um, I let it dry over 24 hours to make sure it was hardened. The bottom was having a harder time hardening, so I flipped it over and then it worked. Um, and now I'm going to show you one of the designs I did. Um, I did this little inspired by Cutie Reptiles ghost dish because this is the only thing I missed from her Halloween launch. So I wanted a little DIY uh, experience here. I started by outlining the ghosts. Um, don't mind that absolute annoying fly. But anyways, I started by outlining the ghost and putting little faces on them. Um, I drew, I don't know, six or seven ghosts here. And then I planned on filling in the rest. I thought that would be the easiest way to do it. Um, and at the end, you'll see all the different designs I made. Like I said, I made three larger bowls and two smaller ones. The smaller ones will probably either be for my mice's salads or hamster salads or crescent gecko diet. Who knows? But yeah, I basically went in and drew all of these little tiny ghosts. Um, I wasn't trying to be exact by any means. Um, just I was just trying to take homage to the adorable design I saw Daniela make that I missed out on. So yeah, once I was done drawing all my little ghosts. I started filling in the background in black. Um, I was using kind of a smaller brush to do this just to make sure I didn't get in any of my ghosts because uh, if I did that, then there would be no going back and I would have to, I don't know, change my whole design because I can't, I can't put white over black, at least I don't think. Anyways, so I was trying to be super careful um, and make sure I got this done right. As you can see, that pesky fly was still hanging around, hoping that this bowl was for them. It's not. Um, yeah, but I basically filled in all of the little ghosties first, 
and then took a larger brush and started filling in the outer areas because those little ghost uh, spike things are very easy to accidentally mess up and fill in and nobody nobody wants to do that so and then I just realized I lost the less of my fidge so here are the bowls I made this is one of the smaller ones it's just a mini ghosty one this is the finished product of the larger ghost one I did like dry brushing on the side thought it made it look spooky here is one of the smaller dishes I did like a little pumpkin stripe moment um, this was the smallest of the large bowls again the like dry brush on the edge with the skull in the center um, and then lastly I did this little uh, stripey jack-o-lantern version of the skull um, that I again will all be mod podging once it's completely dry thank you so much for watching uh, please like subscribe next week you will be seeing me putting some of these into one of my hamster enclosures so definitely subscribe if you want to see that um, if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends uh, let people know if you like my channel. I don't know. Say hey in the comments if you want to say hey. I try to respond to literally every single comment. Um, and without further ado, I will see you guys next week. And I hope you have a great yesterday. Bye.